One who has forsaken material occupations to engage in the devotional service of the Lord may sometimes fall down while in an immature stage. Does this sound familiar? This is just what Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur was saying. Yet there is no danger of his being unsuccessful. On the other hand, a non-devotee, though fully engaged in occupational duties, does not gain anything. We see this earlier in the first canto, right? Shrama eva hi kevala. You can engage in Varnashram Dharma like crazy. You can follow all the rules, say all the mantras with all the accents and everything, the hums and the whos and the, all that stuff. But without, the, without bhakti, without ananya bhakti, it's shrama eva, it's just used so much, just a waste of time. Just flushing your time down the toilet. And then, um, then he says, persons who are actually intelligent and philosophically inclined should endeavor only for that purposeful end, which is not attainable even by wandering from the topmost planet down to the lowest. As far as happiness derived from sense enjoyment is concerned, it can be obtained automatically in the course of time just as in the course of time we obtain miseries, even though we do not desire them. That's verse 18. And then text 19, he says, Navai jano jatu katan chana vrajain mukunda sevyan vayaranga sangshatim smaran mukundangri upaguhanam punar vihatu michin narasograho janaha. Such a wonderful verse. He says, my dear Vyas, even though a devotee of, the, of Lord Krishna sometimes falls down somehow or other, he certainly does not go, undergo material existence like, the, like others, the fruitive workers and the jnanis. Because a person who has once, once relished the taste of the lotus feet of the Lord can do nothing but remember that ecstasy again and again. And this, this verse was called to my attention maybe 35 years ago by um, my godbrother Rameshwar, who at the time was one of the leaders in Prabhupada's society, ISKCON. Some devotees, we were having a meeting of some godbrothers in, uh, in Honolulu, in Hawaii, and somebody was talking about some former leaders that had all, at that time had already left the mission, really big names. And someone referred to them as former devotees or ex-devotees. And Rameshwar's eyes got big. And he said, Babru, get that first canto, first volume for me. Open it to uh, chapter 5, verse 19. Read the verse in the purport for me. And so I read the verse and then the purport. Here's Srila Prabhupada's purport. A devotee of the Lord automatically becomes uninterested in the ch enchantment of material existence because he is rasagraha or one who has tasted the sweetness of the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. Now, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur puts, has interesting language for this, which I'll get to in a, minute, in a few minutes. There are certainly many instances where devotees of the Lord have fallen down due to uncongenial association, just like fruit of workers, who are always prone to degradation. But even though he falls down, a devotee is never to be considered the same as a fallen karmi. A karmi suffers the result of his own fruit of reactions, whereas a devotee is reformed by chastisement directed by the Lord himself. And I used to hear this when I was a brand new devotee. Whenever I would get sick or I would hurt myself or something, Govinda Dasi especially would say, Krishna is closing your karmic account. 
this is this isn't regular karma this is Krishna karma Krishna is taking care of you personally and I would say oh great <laughs> um, the sufferings of an orphan and the sufferings of a beloved child of a king are not one and the same an orphan is really poor because he has no one to take care of him but a beloved son of a rich man although he appears to be on the same level as an orphan is always under the vigilant of vigilance of his capable father a devotee of the Lord due to wrong association sometimes imitates the fruitive workers the fruitive workers want to lord it over the material world similarly the neophyte devotee foolishly thinks of accumulating some material power in exchange for devotional service such foolish devotees are sometimes put into difficulty by the Lord himself as a special favor he may remove um, all material paraphernalia as a special favor he may remove all material paraphernalia by such action the bewildered devotee is forsaken by all friends and relatives and so he comes to his senses again by the mercy of the Lord and is set right to execute his devotional service in the Bhagavad Gita it is also said that such fallen devotees are given a chance to take birth in a family of highly qualified brahmanas or a rich mercantile family. A devotee in such a position is not as fortunate as one who is chastised by the Lord and put into a position seemingly of helplessness. Sounds like a nice thing, doesn't it? Oh, you get another birth and it's in a nice devotee family or a Brahmin family or a rich family and you get it. But Prabhupada says it's better to get thrown into the gutter. If you fall away from devotional service, you're more fortunate if you get kicked into the gutter. The fallen devotees born into a good family may forget the lotus feet of the Lord because they are less fortunate. But the devotee who is put into a forlorn con condition is more fortunate because he swiftly returns to the lotus feet of the Lord, thinking himself helpless all around. I got nothing. I have nothing but devotional service. Pure devotional service is so spiritually relishable that a devotee becomes automatically uninterested in devotional in material enjoyment that is the sign of perfection in progressive devotional service a pure devotee continuously remembers the lotus feet oops I did the wrong thing again uh, the devotee um, a pure devotee continuously remembers the lotus feet of Lord Sri Krishna and does not forget him even for a moment, not even ex in exchange for all the opulence of the three worlds. That's kind of an interesting verse and purport. And what it shows is just how powerful bhakti is. When someone engages in bhakti, even if due to immature, the immature uh, nature of their devotion, if they fall away from, from the practices of devotional service, fall away from uh, the association of devotees, and appear even to be in, in a degraded position, they're actually quite fortunate. We have we have a, um, a friend who uh, came into the Association of Devotees in North Carolina, just kind of a street guy, very deliberately street guy, living very deliberately in the mode of ignorance, doing just the, I mean, just the craziest stuff living on the street. 
And he came into the association of devotees. He lived in the ashram. Um, he lived in the ashram in North Carolina for a while, and then he went to Audarya, and then just disappeared one night. And then we saw him again on Facebook, and he went back to his street life. And uh, that's, that's just how he rolls. And, um, but he's not who he was before. He's not who he thinks he is. He's been claimed by Bhakti Devi. And he may wiggle and try to s slip the hook for a long time. But it's, it's just not going to happen. Um, so, I mean, these are very, these are, these are all fortunate souls. People, dev, you know, devotees may completely disappear, as we say in English, into the woodwork. Um, but Bhakti Devi knows who they are. She's living there in their hearts. Even devotees, well, we, we have a story of one of our godbrothers. Um, who, he actually took sannyas and then he left um, went away for many years living um, just went back to a life of drugs and sex and rock and roll I guess and he, the woman he was living with didn't even know that he was a devotee she had no clue of all of those years of his life and then he got sick and he was dying and when he was lying on his deathbed apparently he had some vision of Srila Prabhupada and he sat up in bed he, this lady found late she found out who he had been and she found the devotees and she told them um, he sat up in bed and he was completely astonished and he said, Oh, Prabhupada, you've come? Bhakti Devi doesn't forget us. You know, we may run away from her, we may run, run away from the association of devotees. So there, there aren't ex-devotees or former devotees. Um, there maybe forgetful devotees, but, um, you know, they, they may be forgotten, or not forgotten, but forgetful, and we may even have forgotten them, but Bhakti Devi hasn't, so they're not really gone. Um, and I want, before, and before I close, oh, maybe this will be uncharacteristically short. I want to take a look at some of Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur's comments on this same verse, um, this 19th verse of the fifth chapter. Um, he says, this verse elaborates the point that there is no misfortune for the devotee. Even that, mis what, what appears to be great misfortune, material great misfortune, um, he says, um, even if they're over, be, overcome because of poor determination, the person who serves Mukunda never, Najatu, returns to Sangsara, the place for enjoying the results of karma. Whereas those practicing karma, Anyava, do return. That's because he does not experience happiness and distress from karmas. So Srila Prabhupada is perfectly following Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur in his purport, not making any of this stuff up. That is because he does not experience happiness, happiness and distress from karmas, since he experiences only the fruit of happiness and distress given directly by the Lord. And then he cites um, a Bhagavatam verse, it cites a, a, a line from the Bhagavatam, a couple of padas. He says, uh, 
Twad avagami naveti bhavaruta shubha shubhayor. It says, when a person realizes you, he no longer cares about his good and bad fortune arising from past pious and sinful acts, since it's you alone who control this good and bad fortune. And then he cites Padma Purana. Nakarma bandhanam janma vaishnavanam chavidyate. The Vaishnavas do not have birth and death caused by karma. These things are all under the control of Bhakti Devi. They are under the control of Krishna. And then he says, and then it gets a little interesting here. He says, remembering from previous practice alone the mental embrace, upaguhanam, of the Lord's lotus feet, he has no desire to give that up. This verse does not say remembering his lotus feet, but rather remembering the embrace of his lotus feet. Just as Srila Prabhupada translates it, remembering the service, the ecstasy of service to, the, to his lotus feet. And then um, a little later he says, this verse also uses the phrase, does not desire to give up, instead of does not give up. He doesn't desire to give up that taste. This implies that he desires that he be devoid of pride in his practice. The accomplishment is in the hands of the Lord. Right? We've been hearing since our first day in the association of devotees. We shouldn't be attached to results. That's under the Lord's control, right? The cause of desiring to give up is then mentioned. Um, I'm sorry, the cause of not desiring to give up is then mentioned. Rasakraha, <clears throat> excuse me. Rasagraha means one who is eager for tasting or one who has a taste which is something like a ghost which cannot be given up. Haunted by rasa. How cool is that? Um, haunted by rasa. The meaning is then that worship after the stages of nishta, ruchi, and asakti becomes rati. Actual rasa at the stage of rati. However, even from the first day of worshiping the Lord, there's certainly a portion of tasting rasa, even if in a very covered form. Game over. <laughs> Bhakti uber alles. <laughs> Sorry, I, was, I almost did that. that. That's not a good thing in Poland, I know. <laughs> um, it's like I was in Munich and, and I was looking on the board for the flight to Wroclaw. Looking for the, where is the flight of Rushlov? Breslau. It's, oh, it's Breslau. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and when they said Breslau, I thought, oh yeah, that's right. When I was looking for, the, when we were, you know, we were looking for, um, you know, we, we saw Danzig on the board, you know, yeah. last, last year, you know. Both sentiments. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is this is I mean, bhakti is unique. Bhakti is supreme. There is nothing like bhakti, and this is what Uddhava is pointing out here. To um, I mean, what what Krishna is pointing out here to Uddhava. And so, pre in the previous verses, he points out. A few things. There are all kinds of systems of religion that we see in the world. 
we saw that in, in those verses. So many different kinds of religion that are described in so many different kinds of scripture because there's so many different kinds of people under the influence of innumerable combinations of the modes of material nature. And they all need to be elevated somehow. Because Krishna is merciful. Because God is good. Um, but he says, that's not what we're talking about. When we talk about Dharma, yeah, okay. But we're real, when we talk about Dharma, real Dharma, we're talking about Dharma that, that brings about people's ultimate good. And so what we saw in those, in those verses, the, the, the title that the devotees have given to this chapter is Krishna explains the yoga system. And he's explaining bhakti as a system of yoga. It's a, you know, it's a, it's, and that's what we see in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu as well. There's, there is a systematic practice um, for bhakti. So therefore we call it bhakti yoga. People think, oh, that's just a marketing thing, right? But it's not. Bhakti is, it's a yoga. And it's actually, yoga means joining, means uniting. And this is the real way to, to unite with the absolute. And not some vague idea of the absolute. But as we see, um, you know, as we hear in Swami's lectures, as we read in Sacred pre Preface, a specific kind of union in the most specific way with these you know, with a specific aspect of the absolute truth. When I was young, I was uh, really into Gandhi. And one of the things that caught me uh, about Gandhi was that he talked about truth and absolute truth as well. He was really into Bhagavad Gita. Um, I tried reading Bhagavad Gita. I think I tried reading three different editions of Bhagavad Gita before I met the devotees. I couldn't make any sense out of them. I was looking for the absolute truth and I couldn't even get past the first chapter, partly because it was, I think, said it was, was set on a battlefield. I think it was also partly because Krishna was protecting me. It was like when, I, when, I, when my friend Turya Das showed me Bhagavad Gita as it is, it really felt as if a curtain was being opened, or a veil was being lifted. Or, you know, like, oh, from my eyes, from my heart, my mind, or something. I had a, a really hard time making any sense out of the other Gitas that I, was, that I tried reading. I, I was frust I was really frustrated. And Turida, you know, this is the first time we actually spoke, and he asked me, have you ever read Bhagavad Gita? And I said, I, I tried. I read three different uh, editions. And he said, which ones? And I remembered a couple of them. And, uh, and he showed me Bhagavad Gita as it is, the little purple uh, paperback Macmillan one from 1968. And he says, if you read this Bhagavad Gita? And I said, no, I haven't. And I read a few pages, a couple of pages here, a couple of pages there, just at random. And I looked at Turiyadas and I said, this makes more sense than anything I've read. I, I'm a little surprised, because frankly, this makes more sense than anything I've read anywhere. And he just smiled. Turiyadas is a very gentle man, wonderful devotee. And he just smiled and he said, yeah. He says, if somebody under actually understands Bhagavad Gita, they can present it in a way that anyone with an open heart will be able to appreciate it. And that was it. I mean, it was by then, you know, I'd already had exposure to, I know, I chanted with the devotees um, over the previous number of months many times, um, but that was it. And that was pretty much, you know, game 
over for me. Um, so as, as Swami said this morning, without Bhagavad Gita, you know, Mahabharata's just, well, as I said, pretty much just a big soap opera, big soap opera. Cool soap opera. But soap opera nonetheless. Okay, thank you for your attention and your patience and your company, again. <laughs> Um, does anyone have anything to add or any comments or questions? Nama Rasana. Yours was the first hand I saw. Uh, Maharaj, you quote Bhagavad Gita that in this endeavor there is no loss. Uh huh. Uh, so I was thinking about the devotees uh, who are very offensive towards another devotee. <laughs> so Bhakti Devi turns off yeah, from this kind of person. So about this person, because it seems that they are in the worst situation than before. It seems so. <coughs> and um, as far as I'm willing to go is to say that there are people whose company we would do well generally to avoid. As far as their relationship with Bhakti, that's her business. Uh, whether she leaves them, whether she abandons them, or whether uh, their relationship with her is, just becomes very covered and, and difficult, I don't know, I can't say. Um, that's really somebody else's business. Um, but when, when they become, especially, you know, when they become offensive, to the process, to, to Bhakti herself, when they become offensive to that channel through which she comes to us, the devotees, the spiritual master, then they become company to uh, company to avoid. Um, and you know, we don't need to talk about them. Um, we don't need to try to analyze their situation or judge them. We know we don't want that situation for ourselves. So. It's, we just, you know, we, it's better that we just we, we just avoid them. Um, I personally, and, and I know I've known plenty of them over the last how many, so many, too many years. Um, but uh, it, it, it may, you know, I mean, it may be that they completely, especially, you know, Guru Aparad. Um, and Vaishnava Aparad, uh, you know, they may completely cut off their their access to bhakti, at least for a long time. And, and they may find themselves in a situation that at least seems worse than before. Uh, it, Sadhu Ninda is the first offense, I, I've always said that Sadhu Ninda is the first offense against the holy name for a reason. We don't miss it. You know, there it is. Don't commit this offense. If you don't, you know, don't, if you miss any of the others, don't miss this one. Avoid it like the plague, because that's just what it is. And it can spread, you know, if we hear what they have to say. That's why, you know, we, sometimes we see these people on Facebook and we just, you know, you unfollow them, unfriend them, block them if you have to, you know, whatever. And we, you know, we just, we just stay away from them. We don't, we don't necessarily need to judge them or speculate about what their fate is or anything like that. Uh, we know that, our, you know, our own fate would be dark if we followed them somehow. Is that okay? Uh, Premar, no. Who? Kali the agent. I don't know. Ah, oh, it's was by uh, Somebody uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Mahaprabhu. No, I'm not really about the, the Kali. Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, like Kali no, Chela. Because the, the Kali. Kali Chela, they become like agents of Kali, yeah. yeah. Yes, 
usłyszałem takie określenie jak agent Kaliuki i czy faktycznie takie coś istnieje? To są osoby, które udają aktów. If Srila Saraswati Thakur says so, <laughs> sure. Um, you know, and we've seen, you know, we may, it's, it's too easy for us to fall into that and, and brand some devotees who we may not like as Koli Chela. <laughs> It's real, it's real, you know, it's real easy. But yeah, certainly there may be, uh, you know, there may be, I mean, he, he may have had certain people in mind. Um, um, it's, you know, it's, I'd have to go back and look and see some of the places where he talked about that. Um, but yeah, there may be agents of Kali who, um, who look and, and act superficially like devotees, but may have some motive other than um, attaining and sharing love for Krishna. And uh, the thing is, you know, we want to find, we, we look for the best association we can. Um, and we do that by, feet, you know, I, I think we do that best, although a lot of our association these days is virtual, I guess. Um, so sometimes it's a little hard to actually feel people's hearts. It's easier to actually feel people's hearts when we spend time with them. Um, and the heart is actually a very powerful, even just the physical heart, a very powerful organ. Electromagnetically, it's more pow much more powerful than the brain. An electromagnetic field stands, extends out many feet, and we can actually perceive people's that's how one way we become attached to each other sometimes are those even that can the, they can and uh, they call it entrain with each other it's kind of a uh, one kind of manifestation of, of, of attachment so um, you know so we it's be the better we get to know each other um, actually get to know each other, then uh, the easier it becomes for us to understand how we want to associate with each other. So a lot of our association is email and Facebook and different kinds of groups, mostly Facebook. Facebook seems to have swallowed so many other kinds of virtual association that have come up over the last 15 or 18 years. Um, and uh, so we just, we have to be very discerning, very careful um, in how we associate with, with each other, how we open our hearts to each other, to, to, to people, and, and what we hear from each other, from others. If I could call on, I'm wondering, uh, more like, like philosophically, if such a thing as the agent of Kali Yuga is possible, because you said that anyone who is in touch with Bhakti, it's game over for him. Bhakti just chooses his destiny. But uh, it seems like it doesn't depend on the motives of, of the people that are engaging in Bhakti. Uh, it's trouble in the meantime. Just as re immature devotees do, sometimes living in the ashram, especially, you know, there are devotees who are just a little troublesome to live with. Um, sometimes it may be due to mental illness, sometimes funny habits, or something like that. And there may be someone who is maybe deliberately disruptive. Um, but eventually, I mean, Bhakti can, she can overpower Krishna, she can subdue Krishna, she can make Krishna a whiny punk. You know, he goes to Subal, oh, she's mad at me, what am I going to do? If she can, if Bhakti Devi can overpower Krishna like that, 
then he, she can certainly over, eventually overpower even someone who may be acting as uh, a, an agent of color. Because that situation is temporary. You know, if someone, if someone is behaving as an agent of Kali, that's a temporary situation, it seems to me. Um, Bhakti is permanent and, um, and progressive. And as we heard this morning, always... <laughs> all, there's always something new, right? There's always a new kid showing up in the scene. There's always some new adventure. Um, there's always some new wonder in bhakti. Um, so, um, those e even those agents of color, those are some, those things. I th I think are mainly warnings to be careful, um, to be discerning, to be careful in our association. Is that is that helpful? Anything else? Uh, yeah, Maharaj, you have uh, quoted this uh, verse from the uh, Bhagavad Gita, Apicha Sudurachar, and uh, where Guru Maharaj is uh, commenting that it's actually about uh, the gopis. Oh, yeah, there's, yeah. that's a whole different yeah, dimension. Yeah, so I was thinking if, if there's a possibility to make this any connection with those verses from the Bhagavatam, that we can see also like a, the, the, the gopis behind or the Brajabhas is behind those verses <laughs> from the where uh, Krishna talks to Udava. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Zapytałem Maharaja, bo zacytował jeden werset z Bhagavad Gita, uh, Apichetsu Durachar, uh, w, którym, uh, w komentarzu do tego wersetu Guru Maharaj, no i tam generalnie to się ciągnie przez kilka wersetów, uh, odnosi się do, 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 do Gopi jako do, do tego najwyższego ideału. E, I jako, że ten werset jest powiązany z tematyką tych wersetów, e, Krishna mówi do Udawy, które Maharaj e, czytał i omawiał. I się zastanawiam, czy jest jakieś połączenie i możliwość jakby powiązania tego wersetu z tamtymi wersetami i zobaczenia niejako w tych wersetach również Gopi, czy też e, po prostu Braja Basi. Perhaps. Um, but I think it would require someone with deeper insight than mine <laughs> to find them. I'm a little wary of, of going there. Might be a good question for tomorrow evening. That's a cop-out, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It, it, yeah, perhaps. Perhaps, although the context, uh, the context here is is pretty clear. I mean, um, Krishna. Well, I I don't see why not. I don't see why not because Krishna is telling Uddhava about the the extraordinary power of bhakti. Yes. And even bhakti that looks doesn't look like bhakti. Doesn't it looks irreligious? Just as we, you know, just as in the comments on Apichet Sudurachara, it, you know, it, it looks. Oh, I mean, what can be worse? Running away from your home, abandoning your husband and children and all your duties in the middle of the night yeah. <laughs> um, to go dally with some boy under the full moon, you know, because. Rock and roll song or something like that. <laughs> doo wah, doo wah. Um, yeah, perhaps. But more than that, I, I, you know, I would be very reluctant to offer anything. Uh, can Bhakti act against the will of Jiva? The thing uh, if Bhakti can overwhelm. Someone who doesn't want her. <laughs> <laughs> because you might have mentioned that she has power to overcome Krishna. But Krishna definitely wants the bhakti. 
but if Jiva doesn't want Bhakti, but she chooses her, yeah, Jiva. <laughs> the Jiva is it's just a silly Jiva who thinks she but, doesn't want But we are Bhakti. in this material world, you know, almost everyone is quite silly, huh? Only few are accepting Bhakti. Yeah. <laughs> It's just, you know, I, the child thinks he doesn't want his medicine. I mean, in, um, among the, um, about Apichet Sudracharo, um, Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur gives two examples um, how, that, how that can work. Um, he says, just as a warrior may be wounded in battle, but doesn't necessarily fall in battle and may go on to become victorious. Or someone may um, uh, fall ill to a disease, but when they take their medicine, um, they become cured and go on to live a healthy life. So someone, you know, someone may um, temporarily fall victim to some bad habits, terrible habits, but then because they, the, the real underlying thing is, the real underlying thing is the warrior wants to fight. The warrior is about fighting. He may be stricken down in battle, or the person wants to live their life. So the jiva, our, our potential is to serve Krishna. And so that's what we, that is what we really want. And when the opportunity comes, how can we resist? Actually, I, now I remember that Shabhupat said that everyone is looking for God, for Bhakti, because everyone is looking for happiness. Everyone's looking for happiness. And ultimate happiness is in Bhakti. Yeah? So right. In the, indirectly, someone is looking for Now I remember. Yeah, no, I've got this God. I've got this God-shaped hole in my heart, and I don't want it filled. You know, the child, oh, you know, the medicine may taste nasty, and the child may think he doesn't want the medicine, but the, he wants to get well. So, you know, mom mixes it with syrup, right? Or puts it in the dropper and puts it down in the back of the throat. And the, and the kid's happy afterwards. The, that mom forced the medicine on him against his will. And then it became become food. Huh? Medicine became food. Then, and the, me then the medicine becomes food, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a question? I have a question. I have a question. I have a question. I have a question. Because now, in the morning, you mentioned that you have to have a qualification to get a bhakti and you have to have a taste. That's what you said. But I was reading somewhere that actually if you have a greed, because greed is something different than taste. It's a design, yeah? greed. Greed. Grace? Greed. Oh, 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 and no qualifications, actually. You get it only because you have a greed. Is that uh, true? I mean, I, I, I was reading one that you know, it's called, um, a song and he expl I mean, he uh, compares himself to dog who's begging, but he's dirty and his master doesn't want him inside, but because he's so annoying and he's begging, 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 finally he's inside. So is that our position? Can you have back to a doctor to teach you what you have to do? What? <laughs> Czy można osiągnąć bakty, jeśli nie ma się tego tego kwalifikacji, ale ma się pragnienie, czyli taką taką chciwość, This is yeah, this is the this is the qualification that's given. Uh, the Srila Rupa Goswami gives in Bhakti Rasamri to Sindhu for Raga Nuga Bhakti. For Vaidhi Bhakti, the qualification is faith in the Guru and the Shastra. And for Raga Nuga Bhakti, it's a greed for, uh, it's a greed for following 
the kind of love for Krishna, for attaining the kind of love for Krishna that one of the residents of Vrindavan has for Krishna. Um, however, as Swami likes to point out, we may not have that greed yet. But because we've come in contact with someone who has that taste, we've developed an interest in it. And we don't have an interest in something else. So we engage in the angas of Vaidhi Bhakti with an aim to attain that greed. So that's Ajata Ruchi Raganuga Bhakti. And eventually that greed comes and we become Raganuga Bhaktas proper. So, yeah, that is, the, I mean, that is the qualification. But Jiva Goswami has, uh, has um, acknowledged a sort of fuzzy area, gray area for us, a sort of tata, you know, sort of shoreline for us, you know, so it's not just a stark line. Um, so sometimes there's a misunderstanding among some devotees that um, Srila Prabhupada taught Vaiti Bhakti because he talked a lot about the Vidhi. Because we couldn't even do that. You know, especially if we didn't keep good, close association with devotees. Um, because of association, those three times I left the temple in 1970, I, had, I, picked, I went back to a couple of bad habits. I kept chanting. I even kept chanting 16 rounds a day. But, I, you know, because I was hanging out with people who did other things, I also did those other things once in a while. Not all the time, but sometimes. Um, so you know, we couldn't even thought, we couldn't even do those simple things, much less the 64 angas of of of, of Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. Um, so Prabhupada emphasized the you know he emphasized the, the the vidhi, but as Swami pointed out this morning, in the summer of 1970, well. In June of 1970, he gave us Nectar of Devotion, and he was working on that in 1968 and 69. And we got it printed and, and distributed uh, in June of 1970. And then later in the summer of 1970, we got the first volume of Krishna book, which showed us exactly what our goal was, live with Krishna in Vrindavan. There, no, and everybody was attracted to that. There was no desire to live in Vaikuntha. And even when the second uh, volume came out, Krishna and Mathura and Dwarka, uh, those are cool pastimes, we like those things, but man, everybody wanted to live with Krishna and Vrindavan. And that's what Prabhupada talked, I mean, no, that's what Prabhupada talked about. And that's the goal of Raga and Ruga Bhakti. So we engage in the, vid we follow the vidhi, and, even in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, um, Rupa Goswami, when he when he des when he des he describes uh, uh, Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti very elaborately, all those sixty-four angas and all the little parts, the things that come under that. Um, it look, you know, devotees become overwhelmed by it. You know. Reading, they read Nectar of Devotion and they think, oh my God, it's all rules and regulations or something. It's not really what it is. It's just describing the process of, of, of Vaiti Sadhana Bhakti. And then he gets to Raganuga Sadhana Bhakti and he says, well, there's an internal process, but basically it's following all these, most of these other things, except for the things that get in the way of developing this love, this Braja Prem. And there's only a few things like, as Swami mentioned, you know, worshiping the queens of Dwarka, because if you worship the queens of Dwarka, then you become a follower of the queens of Dwarka. You don't want that. And just a few of those angas, uh, uh, those 64 angas of Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, that, you know, that, we, the, that um, a Raganuga Bhakti wouldn't follow. And then there's an internal practice that gradually develops as, um, you know, as their, um, as their bhakti grows. So yeah, the, that greed, that's, that's the distinction between 
um, Vaidhi Bhakti and Raganuga Bhakti, the qualification, qual and, and the goal. The goal of Vaidhi Bhakti is Vakunta Prem, and the goal of uh, Raganuga Bhakti is Braja Prem. And that's what our Acharyas are teaching. Other people get picked up along the way, and they may get sorted out, and they may find themselves kind of get, getting sorted out, maybe to the Sri Sampradaya or something like that. But um, our whole process is about, if we don't have it now, if we don't have that, that lobha now, developing that lobha. And that means that the greed for other things has to diminish. You know, the greed for uh, profit adoration and distinction, being comfortable in the material world and all the, all the things that we strive for. A lot of devotees don't understand that. They think, oh, I've got, they, okay, I've got a taste for that. Therefore, I'm a Raga Nuga Bhakta. And therefore, I can do all this other stuff. In the meantime, uh, they have so many other things they really would rather do. And, uh, but greed for that means greed. When you're greedy for something, you do anything you can to get it. The hell with everything else, you know? I mean, if you're greedy for money, you neglect your health, your family, your, you know, morals, whatever, you know? You read about those Wall Street people, you know, they, they just become, off, some of them, awful people. Those people became greedy for money in the, what is it, uh, eight, nine years ago? and created that crash in 2007, 2008. They didn't give a damn about the rest of us. Hundreds of thousands of people, probably millions of people around the world, ended up losing their jobs, their homes, and some even their lives. Because these people, they got, oh, we got it. We have, oh, we found some trick here. We can make piles of money, hand over fist, hell with everybody else. So that's what greed means. So, you know, if, if we want, you know, if we want Braja Prem that badly, hell with everything else. Hell with the moralists and the people with all their religion and everything like that, you know. Um, I'm just going for it. So yeah, that's the real qualification for Raga Nuga Bhakti. And if we don't have that yet, we've got some interest in it because of our association. And we just keep practicing until that takes us over, and it will. We can be assured of that by these, by these verses. Anything else? Oh, okay. <laughs> this is our new strategy. Yeah, <laughs> Bhakti yoga czy społeczność drogi, a nie jest w jakiś sposób narażona na, 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 na jakieś krzywdy, bo można powiedzieć, że jeżeli, jeżeli mówi się tutaj o przedkładaniu miłości, nie ponad prawo z jednej strony, czyli bhakta, osoba uważana za bhaktę, która dopuszcza się jakiś, no, nie mówimy tutaj o jakiś o tych rzeczach, które pan Maharaj wspomniał, typu karma, czyli ulegania jakimś złym nawykom w sensie osobistej praktyki czy życia, ale na przykład krzywdzenie innych, albo wręcz wykonywanie czym haniebnie, inwestowanie dzieci, człowiek i tak dalej. A z drugiej strony mamy mowę o tym, żeby nie popełnić obraz. Czyli jeżeli sprzęgamy się w te dwie rzeczy, czyli że bardzo nie należy krytykować za to, za jego upadki, i nie powinno się go obrażać, to, to może być takim potężnym narzędziem, e, znaczy to może być takim, taką blokadą, która te, za, jakby powstrzymuje działanie w momencie, gdy jest potrzebne. E, i, no, no, widać to na, na wielu przykładach, osoby takie czasem dalej są na swoich pozycjach, korzystając, korzystają z tego wręcz i jak należy to rozumieć po prostu, bo wtedy Ci, te inne osoby, które no, 
uważamy, uważamy za niewinne, bo są dzieci, które się pojawiają w środowisku faktów, więc czy one ulegają, czy to jest ta karma i tak dalej, więc jakby, jak, jak to rozumieć? I have a just a question that, that was um, raised there about this, this generosity of bhakti, mm -hmm. the idea that there will be, we look at our love over justice, mm -hmm. right, the Umang hand, and, and then we see that it's, it's not just the devotees that fall down into their karma, karmic activities or karmic life, but we see that actually they commit criminal acts or abuse kids and, 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 and women and, and isn't that the kind of weakness from a social point of view that we say we say a love over justice and, we, and, we, you know, we, um, and at the same time we say we shouldn't commit offenses so isn't it that we may wait too long because of this before, before we act and, and so many things happen the one, for example, a, 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 a bystander could, could, could say, well, that's the weakness of your philosophy. So how do you come to, how to understand? And what about these people who were abused? They were already devotees? And is it just their karma? Or is it, you know, is it, is it, is it, yeah, how can you understand that? Uh, that's a hard one for me. I was a Gurukula teacher. I was a Gurukula headmaster for many years. Um, and uh, and I also saw, you know, many women abused. If someone's engaged in criminal activity, if, if, if devotees are engaged in criminal activity, um, then we should try to stop them and then report them. Because if we don't, then it creates, as we have so much experience of, it creates enormous um, problems for the society. And I don't ju mean just publicity problems. It's beginning with publicity problems. That's just the tip. The real problems are the, the um, psychological and social problems. Um, if we really care about them, we should try to stop them. And if we care about uh, the work of our acharyas, uh, we care about the mission, then we try to stop it. I mean, then we report them. If they're abusing children, they should be, I mean, they should be stopped and reported immediately. And I'll, I'll tell you, frankly, there are guys I would just like to throttle, uh, choke to death. Still, um, other devotees can be, I, I will let other devotees be generous with them. Some of them, some of them, some of the, the activities are just too close. To, to home for me. Um, they've uh, abused uh, a couple of them, very close friends of my daughters, or kids that, you know, children that I knew, um, or men who've abused women who are friends of our family, or something like that. When it's too close, I don't want to have, I simply don't want to have anything to do with them myself. Other devotees can be generous with them. But in the meantime, if it's criminal activity, we should try to stop it and we should report them. For more reasons than we want to list. Um, and afterwards, there may be devotees who want to be generous with them. And that's fine. And they, can, and they can justify it philosophically, and that's fine. Other devotees may simply not want to associate with them for a number of reasons. And I think that needs to be accommodated as well. Um, well, because I'm one of them. In, in many cases, I, you know, I'm one of them. It's, it's actually, it's a very um, touchy thing. And it's, you know, we've... Um, I, I, I have a lot of 
personal, um, uh, personal experience with this. Um, it's very, um, very tricky. Um, ultimately, they will be successful in bhakti. In the meantime, how we want to associate with them is a completely different question. And how we want to deal with criminal activities or activities that are harmful to other people. Those are things that we have to think about in a social way as well. Uh, and, and those are things I think that, you know, that will ultimately be better for their spiritual growth too. Um, you know, if you stop them and remove them from the criminal activities. I mean, I, ha I have friends who fell into very low criminal activities, God brothers who fell into very low criminal activities. And some of them have more or less recovered from those things. And they have, you know, they they've uh, uh, gotten back into the association. I mean, they've accepted, uh, you know, the the uh, their time in prison, and, and and they and they don't make excuses um, for those things. Uh, the, 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 the child abusers is a whole, another thing. The, the, these are people that are hard to deal with because they um, they can be uh, uh, really manipulative people. And they can just really hard to um, really hard to deal with. But a lot of a lot of them are a lot of the people who've fallen into criminal activities have been very honest and said, "Yeah, wow, you know, got into really bad association, really screwed up." Um, I. I had a very hellish number of years in prison, and uh, and I deserved every minute minute of it. And I'm so glad for the association of devotees now. And other people, you know, I mean, other people they've found the association of devotees here and there. And other pe and some people who are generous, and I'm happy for them. You know, they'll they'll make spiritual progress. And I have questions about the people who they've harmed, whose faith in Krishna consciousness they've harmed along the way. The children who don't want to have anything to do with Krishna consciousness, the, the wives, um, and the mothers of the children, um, and fathers of the children who they've abused, who don't want to have anything to, Krishna con to do with Krishna consciousness. Okay, people can be generous with those people, but what about the people you know, who don't want to associate, those, who's going to be kind to them, who's going to be generous with them? They just, you know, people will just say, oh, so-and-so blooped, but they won't, you know, they won't address why. It's a really tricky thing. Yeah, when you think of, when you talk about most abominable activity, that's, I think this is something that certainly, it's certainly, these, you know, our experience with these things certainly complicates that. Um, but when there's, you know, when the, when there is actual criminal activity, um, you know, if we know about it, I think we have to be responsible and and, and stop it and report it as soon as we can. And uh, yeah, and there may be social consequences for that. And uh, ah, we're grown-ups; we can take it, or we hope we can take it. And if not, then we'll suffer a little and we'll get over it eventually. I also have a question which is uh, interconnected with what the, the Vakya was asking. Oh, thank you very much. I was ask them, I will trust them. Uh, so, uh, my question is have you seen the uh, movie, which is documentary, mm -hmm. was released approximately around the Shingachato Dasi. Yeah. It? Have you seen it? And I would like to ask you for a comment. I mean, how, according to your knowledge, uh, what is the gravity of accusation which I make in this movie? A więc w okolicach Shingachato Dasi w sieci ukazał się film dokumentalny, który traktuje o sprawie molestowania dzieci w jednej z instytucji Kolubia Waśnowizmu. Pytałem Maharadża, czy widział ten dokument. Mówi, że widział. I poprosiłem go o to, żeby skomentował wagę, jak gdyby, oskarżeń, które w tym filmie podałem. I don't have um, 
direct knowledge of of many of the situations that are that are uh, uh, that film addresses. Um, some of them, some of them are are recent, um, fairly recent, and I don't I don't really I've heard about them, um, but I don't really um, I don't really know. Uh, just what the situation is. I have, I have an opinion based on what I, what little I understand of them, but I uh, uh, prefer not to uh, comment on, on them too much. I did watch the entire thing. I was, um, I, I wasn't, it didn't make me happy. Um, it doesn't make me happy that these that these things uh, seem to be still going on, um, and I, you know, I'd like to see them addressed more effectively. Mm -hmm. um, and that's about as much as I I'd care to say. Thank you again so much for your company and your patience.